Hello, I'm Pastor Danielle Casey, and we welcome you to Worship Where You Are with Triumphant Love Lutheran Church here in Austin, Texas, on this first Sunday of Christmas. Just a, a few announcements and reminders. We continue to gather your prayer requests, so send those into the office or give us a call here. We also thank you for continuing your offering throughout the end of this unusual year. You can do that online or send it into us via snail mail. We also continue to gather your 2021 commitment cards. Please help us fill out our tree. If you haven't already sent those in, please do so. Make that your New Year's resolution. And you may pick up poinsettias throughout the week during our office hours if you purchased one for our Christmas services. Final reminder, we will have our annual meeting held virtually on January 31st. More information can be found in our e-news about that and the preceding budget workshops. And now we begin our service as we turn to the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who was in the beginning, who dwells among us, who inspires us to justice and mercy. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God of goodness and loving kindness, we confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbors. We have turned away from your invitation to new life. We have turned away from the lonely and downtrodden. In your abundant mercy, forgive us our sins, those we know and those known only to you. For the sake of the one who came to live among us, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Hear the good news of peace and salvation. God forgives us all our sin, not through our own work, but through Jesus Christ, made known to all people. With all who come to the manger, rejoice in this amazing gift of grace. Amen. We sing. Rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Hear the hint to what we say. Jesus Christ is born today. Ox and ass before him now, and he is in the manger now. Christ is born Rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now ye hear of endless bliss. Jesus Christ was born for this. He has opened heaven's door, and we are blessed forevermore. Christ was born for this. Christ was born for this. Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now ye need not fear the grave. Jesus Christ was born to save. Calls you one and calls you all to gain the everlasting home. Christ was born to save. Christ was born. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, you wonderfully created the dignity of human nature and yet more wonderfully restored it. In your mercy, let us share the divine life of the one who came to share our humanity, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
I now invite our young people to gather around to join me for a children's message. Hello to all of you and Merry Christmas, a very, very Merry Christmas to you all. I was wondering if you knew what I had here. Yeah, it's a Christmas gift. And no, I'm not a bit late. This is a very special gift. I was wondering, what was your favorite Christmas gift that you got this year? Mine was this necklace that I'm wearing that was a gift from my husband and kiddos. And I was wearing it special for today. Did you know that it was actually still Christmas? Because there are not just one, but 12 days of Christmas, just like we sing in that song you've maybe heard before. On the first day of Christmas, yeah, all the way to 12. So we are still celebrating Christmas on this Sunday. And today we meet Simeon and Anna, two people who are in the temple when Mary and Joseph bring Jesus there for a special ritual, a special ceremony that they did in the Jewish faith. And so Simeon and Anna, we see, are still celebrating Christmas too. They are still celebrating the birth of Jesus. And often I have found that with our Christmas gifts, even some of our favorites, like the things you said, like my favorite, that after a few days, they maybe get forgotten or ignored, pushed maybe to the back of the closet where we don't see them or play with them or enjoy them as much as we did on that first Christmas day. But... There is one gift we see that gets wrapped up and is ready for us to open again and again and again. Not just on the first day of Christmas, not just on the 12th day of Christmas, but every day of the whole year. And that is the gift of Jesus and the love of God. So we get to have the joy of tearing open that paper and enjoying the gift of Jesus again and again and again. I hope you feel that today too on this first Sunday of Christmas. Will you pray with me? Our hands we fold, our heads we bow. It's time to talk to God now. Dear God, thank you for Jesus who shows us your love and is the best Christmas gift. Help us to open it every day. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our service continues with our readings for today. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. 
For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory. And you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. The word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. A reading from Paul's letter to the Galatians. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you were children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord a pair of turtle doves, or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people, Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined 
for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we will sing perhaps the oddest of Christmas carols. After all the candlelight and joy and presents and everything else that went along with our Christmas celebrations these last few days, you might be wondering, what in the world are we doing singing about death? Luke's account of Simeon's troubling song hauntedly hints at the scepter of death not to mention his piercingly prophetic aside to Mary about her child's future. Alongside the other Christmas carols we sing this first Sunday of Christmas, this one sounds odd, even dissonant. So let me ask once again, what's all this talk about death doing in the middle of our celebration of life? Jesus' presentation in the temple was an important ritual for new, proud parents, Mary and Joseph, one of many for the new parents in those early days of Jesus' life. Because on the eighth day, Jesus was circumcised and named, and then on the 40th day, there was this other ritual of childhood, the presentation and purification. Jesus would have been brought to the temple, as Luke describes, for this special service of dedication. And because he was the firstborn male in their family. What we read in the Gospel of Luke is an account of these important, though everyday, rituals. But then something surprising happens. Frederick Buechner describes it like this. Jesus was still in diapers when his parents brought him to the temple in Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as the custom was, and offer a sacrifice. And that's when old Simeon spotted him. Years before, Simeon had been told that he wouldn't die until he'd seen the Messiah with his own two eyes. And time was running out. When the moment finally came, one look through his cataract lenses was all it took. He asked if it would be all right to hold the baby in his arms, and they told him to go ahead, but be careful not to drop him. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace according to your word. 
for my eyes have seen your salvation, he said, the baby playing with the fringes of his beard. The parents, of course, were pleased as punch, so he blessed them too for good measure. Then the aged Anna, a prophet who had been living in the temple, also comes and offers her prophetic words of wisdom about Jesus. Her eyes tired from years of watching a world in pain. This baby is a sight for their sore eyes. A sight for their certain eyes. They are eyes wrinkled with time and worry. They are eyes of longing and waiting and hoping. They are the eyes of faith. The church still sings Simeon's song these centuries later. It is often called the Nunc Dimittis, Latin for now send away. We will sing it today as the message song, but it is sometimes sung after Holy Communion. Simeon's words also conclude the service of Compline, the order for prayers at the close of the day, and they are regularly said or sung at the end of a funeral service. Lord, Simeon sings, now you can let your servant go in peace, for your word has been fulfilled. The song tells us that he is now ready to die when that time comes. Simeon perceives, you see, that in the Christ child, God has kept God's promises. That in this babe set for the rising and fall of many, God has acted once and for all to address the question and scepter of death with the promise of life. This, then, is why we sing Simeon's song after receiving Holy Communion. For at this table, in this meal, we too, like Simeon, not only hear but also see and touch and taste the promise of life that God makes to us. And after receiving this promise from God in the bread and the wine, we too are propelled to confident and courageous lives even in a world so marked by death and loss. This explains, too, why we sing Simeon's song in the evening and at funerals. For as darkness overtakes the world, be it the darkness of evening or the darkness of death, we commend ourselves, all of our lives, our loved ones, to the God made known through both the manger and the cross, the God who has promised us life eternal in the gift of holy baptism. And we continue to sing Simeon's song all these many years after St. Luke records it, simply because it tells of God's great love for us, a love that not even death, can destroy. Several years ago, my grandmother, Mima, as we call her, was ill at Thanksgiving and throughout the holidays, so much so that we were afraid that we were going to finally lose her at the age of 92. Amazingly, thankfully, dare I say miraculously, she recovered, but she had given us a pretty good scare. Good enough that though our schedules were jam-packed, Eric and I decided that we would drive up to Fort Worth with our kids, along with my sister and brother-in-law, to surprise her the weekend before Christmas. On the surface of things, I thought we were doing this just in case, you know? But when I got there, I realized we were doing it for another reason 
a deeper reason, dare I say, a spiritual reason. When I saw her looking at our children, looking at Bolton and then at Brecken, I knew why we had come. When I saw her looking at them with the gleam in her eyes that was not just from tears of joy, I knew why we had come. As she looked into their young, bright eyes, she saw a bit of what I imagine Simeon and Anna saw that day in Jesus' eyes. She saw life. She saw light. She saw hope. She saw the future. She even glimpsed her own salvation. And somehow, as young as they were at the time, the moment seemed not at all lost on Brecken and Bolton either. As they looked back into her eyes, crinkly around the edges, as Brecken used to say, they too saw life. They saw light. They saw the past and the future. In that moment, when the certainty of death had been so very near, we all glimpsed our salvation more clearly, more certainly. It was not only a sight for sore eyes, it was a sight for certain eyes. Eyes filled with the certainty of our faith. We know those days will surely come, the ones of which Simeon dared to speak so near after Christmas, those days that will pierce our own souls too. The day did indeed come a few years later when Mima left this life for her eternal one, and on that day, I thought of our time together that weekend before Christmas, and I sang and said those words, Lord, now you let your servant, Mima, go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. At her funeral, we sang those words as a congregation, knowing that her eyes had seen the salvation which God had prepared in the sight of every people, including our own family. My eyes have seen it too. For Christ is a light to reveal God to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. It is a sight for certain eyes is it not? It is a sight for our eyes, eyes filled with faith. So yes, today we sing perhaps the oddest of Christmas carols, but just as the scepter of the cross cast a shadow over the manger, the scepter of death still casts a pall over this pandemic Christmas of ours. So perhaps it is not so very out of place, not so dissonant after all. Because death doesn't take a holiday, grief cares not that it is Christmas, the virus certainly hasn't gone on vacation. So yes, we do sing of death just a few days after our Christmas celebration of life. So that by naming death, it may no longer control or terrify or diminish us and the life this birth intends for us. With the coming of Emmanuel, God with us, we need no longer fear anything, not even death itself. For in the birth of Christ, the Christ child, so long ago, and now again, as we gather around word and meal wherever we are, 
we too have seen and heard, tasted and felt God's steadfast and tenacious commitment to be both with us and for us forever. And suddenly, this side of Christmas, Simeon's odd and courageous carol is also now our own. And so we join in the song. salvation which you have prepared in the sight of all With the new year dawning, let us give thanks to God for bringing us through this year of turmoil. Let us pray for the renewal of hearts, minds, and lives that we may live more fully in Christ's light this new year. Hear our prayer, hear our prayer, Lord, make us whole. Peace to Gracious Creator, at this year's end, we give thanks to you for the blessings of the last year. When we felt joy, let the warmth of that moment live on in our hearts. When we felt sorrow, let your gentle spirit heal that sadness. When we felt anger, let your mercy fill our hearts and dissolve that fury. And when we felt the power of your presence, Rekindle it that we may know we walk with you in all things. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Gracious Creator, at the new year's beginning, look down on this earth and heal its woes. For the violence that drives so many souls, send your peace through us. For the poverty that destroys so many lives, Send banquets and homes and work through us. For the loneliness that breaks so many hearts, send your warm and folding arms through us. For the injustices that diminish so many people, send your righteousness through us. To, for the riches and opportunities and possessions and contentment that define the lives of many, Send your spirit of generosity, compassion, and action into those lives. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Gracious Creator, as we turn the calendar page to a new year, help us to remember that you are the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, and that you always hear our prayers. We lift up to you these joys and concerns of our congregation. We lift up our prayers of thanksgiving for our triumphant love ministry 
especially our triumphant love staff, Deacon Bree, Pastor Armin, Amy, Jeff, Tracy, and Sarah, Jeff, Gary, and Carolyn, that they may find rest and restoration in their holiday Sabbath. We pray for those in need of healing, especially for David, Myron, Johnson, Brody, Bolton, and Emily, for those who are traveling, and for those in treatment for cancer, especially Lene and Barbara. We pray for those battling COVID-19 across the country and around the world, for those in their last days, especially for Angie, and for those who mourn the loss of loved ones, especially Debbie Settlemeyer and the loss of her Aunt Helen, and for those in our hearts and minds now. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Gracious creator, as generations are born, live, and die, you continue. Remember those who have looked to you with hope and draw into your presence all those who have not yet turned their faces to you. We look forward to your coming again and the time when all the earth will rest in peace. Come soon, Lord. Amen. And the peace of Christ be with you all. Please share a sign of Christ's peace with those in your household and those you meet throughout this Christmas season. Your continued support of our ministry during this unprecedented time is greatly appreciated. You can mail in your offering or use this time to set up online giving. Simply go to tllc.org and click on the Give tab. Or use our Give Plus text feature to give your offering digitally. Simply text the amount you wish to give to 512-357-7693 and then follow the secure payment instructions. pray. Gracious God, you came to us as one unknown, bringing joy and salvation to the earth. Nourish us through word and water, wine and wheat, that with all who welcome your birth, we may proclaim your peace, revealed in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you, lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is 
is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. In the wonder and mystery of the word made flesh, you have opened the eyes of faith to a new and radiant vision of your glory, that beholding the God made visible, we may be drawn to love the God whom we cannot see. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy God, creator of all and source of life, at the birth of time, your word brought light into the world. In the fullness of time, you sent your son, Jesus, born of Mary, as a light to reveal you to the nations and as our own salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his birth and life among us, his death and resurrection, we await his coming again when all things will be restored in him. Amen. And gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. What child is this who laid to rest on Mary's land? Greet with them sweet while shepherds watch our keeping. This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him long, the babe, the song. Oh, bring him in 
incense, gold, and myrrh, come peasant king to own him. The king of kings salvation brings, let loving hearts enthrone him. Praise, raise a song on high, the virgin sings her lullaby. Joy, joy, for Christ is born, the babe, the son of Mary. We now invite you to receive and share the elements using the words, the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Those not receiving the sacrament may receive a blessing on the forehead. And this is the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. of the world you step down into darkness open my eyes let me see beauty that made this heart adore you hope of a life spent with you here i am to worship here i am to bow down here i am to say that you're my god you're all together Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us from your very self with the body and blood of Christ. Through this mystery, send us forth to proclaim your promise to a world in need. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And now receive the blessing. May you be filled with the expectation of Mary and the obedience of Joseph the joy of the angels and the excitement of the shepherds, the determination of the magi and the peace of the prophets, Simeon and Anna. And almighty God, creator, savior, and sustainer, bless you now and forever. Amen. We sing. Jesus. 
shepherds feared and trembled when low above the earth rang out the angel chorus that hailed our Savior's birth. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Down in a lonely manger, the humble Christ was born. And God sent us salvation that blessed Christmas morn. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. And a final reminder before we dismiss that you may pick up your Christmas poinsettias Tuesday through Thursday during office hours here at the church. And now, go in peace. Share the gift of Jesus. Thanks be to God. Thank you.